Hi, everybody. Sorry to make you wait. Apparently, I needed to do an update on my Zoom. So that was sort of a pain in the butt. Uh, hopefully, none of you guys had to do the same update. Um, welcome to today's chat with Lynn Acton. She'll be joining us soon. And I'm really happy that she is uh, going to flesh out this topic of loosely, we're going to call it calming signals, which if you listen to my podcast on the topic, you know that that's not necessarily a formal um, term for horses. It came out of the, 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 well, Lynn will explain it more, but it came from dog training. Anyway, I did a podcast episode on it and I had some feedback that was like, well, this is a cool topic, but what, like, we just need more information. Like, what do we do with the fact that horses are giving us this body language? So I asked Lynn to join us and talk about it a bit more with me, because I do think it's important to get our arms around it, if it is in fact still a little bit uh, hard to get our arms around. So Lynn did some digging and some research and we're gonna include um, her article that has the original source material that our knowledge of these calming signals uh, comes from. But I'll, I think I'll start by, first of all, hi Lynn, looks like we're both live. Um, hi, Jeff. I'll, I'll start by having, you talk about, I mean, I briefly mentioned that calming signals is a type of language, if you will, body language that horses give us, and probably we give each other too, um, based on the nervous system regulating itself. But you, and maybe you can define a little bit more about what these signals are. We'll just start with that. Okay, Jack, can you uh, globally mute everybody else? Because I do hear somebody else's. Yeah, I will go through and mute folks if you want to uh, carry on. Yep, I'm scrolling through. I think we're That's good. Okay. Um, yes, I at first uh, at first understanding or, or first glance, I found the calming signal concept rather confusing, but the more I looked at it, the more important I realized that it really is because calming signals are actions that horses take when they want to um, reduce their own stress. And I'm going to look at some notes on this one because this, some of this is new to me and I want to make sure I explain it as carefully as possible. Um, they're actions that horses take to calm themselves, to encourage somebody else to calm themselves. And that might be another horse or it might be a person. Um, or to diffuse a tense situation. So all of these are aimed at maintaining um, positive or maintaining harmony in your social group, which of course makes perfect sense for horses because in the wild, horses live in family groups that thrive on cooperation, not competition. You need to cooperation to look out for each other and, and for the group to thrive. So you need to have the social skills in order to um, uh, make sure that, <clears throat> that everything goes smoothly. You're to avoid conflict and, and keep your social relations intact. But the problem is that the, the comic signals can be very confusing to people for a number of reasons. For one, they're the same behaviors that can mean other things. A horse might be shaking his head as a calming signal. He might be shaking his head because it's, the flies are bugging him, or it might be that you just tickled his ear. And so you have to look at a whole big context of uh, what's happening. Um, and that includes the horse's emotional state, his entire body language. You can't just look at um, that one body part, you can't look at his ears and go, oh, he's doing a calming signal or he's stressed. You gotta look at the big picture, the whole body language. Um, and then different horses use different calming signals. Uh, they, I don't know that, I don't know whether all horses use all of them, but certainly they, they tend to use different ones. And, and since I've been thinking about this, I've noticed this with my own horses. And so I'm reinterpreting some behaviors that I have observed in the past. Mm -hmm. And so um, the, the, another thing that makes them confusing is that some of the most important calming signals get totally misinterpreted by people and assumed to be disrespectful. When in fact, when a horse is using a calming signal, 
he is using this with the assumption that this is a respectful um, thing to do. He's, he's, it's, it's a very respectful communication to another individual. And he's assuming everybody understands what it means. Yeah, so, you know, I think Lynn, this would be... This would be a great time to, uh, I too, I'm going to check my notes that you sent over and I encourage all the listeners to read Lynn's good article that summarizes this afterwards. But um, I think that the licking and chewing, as you're chewing, if you could mute yourselves, that'd be great. I'm trying to go through and manually mute all of you, but I'm not keeping up. Um, For some reason, licking and chewing seems to have gained quite a bit of, um, attention or recognition as a calming signal like the yawning and but there's some others here that I'm looking at my notes that you gave that I'm interested why they haven't become as popular and but anyway I'll go through the ones that you sent me Lynn just so our our listeners have some visuals you mentioned head shaking already there's the half closing eyes or a lowered eyelid uh there's shaking head which we already talked about there's a blink response and I know folks that study Masterson method talk quite a bit about this the horse blinking its eyes a bit more rapidly there's things they do with their body like maybe arcing their body or or turning their flank towards something or away from something these can be as you pointed out Lynn they might be some other response but sometimes they can also be these calming signals where the horse is diffusing tension from itself or trying to diffuse it from the situation. Um, eating, the horse pausing sometimes, these are all calming signals. I read somewhere, I don't know if you came across it, where like laying down and or rolling can be a calming signal. But I wonder if you had any thoughts on why we've locked in so much to the licking and chewing, or do you think that we have sort of been singularly focused on that one, Lynn? Well, licking and chewing got a lot of attention amongst the natural horsemanship people who saw it, who, who defined it as a, the horse is digesting a thought, so it's a good thing. And in fact, the science very much is that licking and chewing happens in, in relation to stress. It has nothing to do with cognitive understanding. Um, so it, it may be that people have reinterpreted something that had already gotten a lot of attention. Okay, okay. So did you want to carry on from where were you? I'm interested how this might have shifted some of your thinking or if you've been maybe paying attention to these calming signals intuitively. I, I think as you point out, it can be confusing to, to discern when some of these behaviors to call them that or body language, when it means one thing versus the horse is calm, trying to calm itself down or asking us to take a more neutralized approach to the situation. If nothing else, it sure makes us pay a, a lot more attention and try to do better to listen to the horse, right? That's why I wanted to have this conversation because it Absolutely. is- Absolutely, yeah. If you don't get any other message from calming signals, it's, we really need to pay attention to their body language and most important of all, their emotional state. Mm -hmm. And I think most people, if they have some empathy for their horse, and you know, if you're here, you probably are a person with empathy for your horse. And I find that people who do have that tend to be pretty good at intuitively reading their horses. So um, if you're, if, if you, pay attention to your horse's emotional state, then notice what he's doing when he's in that emotional state. He may be able to develop a better understanding of um, what your horse's particular calming signals are. Um, and this is something that, that I've been seeing and um, found rather intriguing in my own horses. And I think some, to some extent, I did intuitively recognize these um, for, for what they are, uh, I didn't, I don't know if I associate them specifically with calming signals, but I knew they had to do with either stress or stress reducing or uh, some kind of reaction to mm -hmm. being uncomfortable and wanting to make themselves more comfortable. Well, uh, so that, if we look at the list, go ahead. Oh, so on that point, there's a question that came in from Melissa. Thank you. It just came in the chat and I think it's very relevant to what you were just saying. So I'll just read this question, Melissa. She writes, are calming signals a sign of stress or a sign that stress needs to be relieved? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> as Lynn concisely um, mentions in the article she wrote for us, 
these signs can overlap with stress, but they're not always a guarantee that stress is present. That's where it can be a little bit confusing, but I'll, I'll turn it to you in a second, Lynn, but the way I handle this confusion is we don't have to get too in the weeds. The way I'm approaching it currently is if I see a horse demonstrating a lot of these signs, like maybe in one session, we're getting head shaking, we're getting horse stopping, we urinate a lot, we're getting other things that I perceive as calming signals. If there's a day or session where a lot of those are stacked up, I take that as it's not a day to push that horse. You know, my whole thing is physical conditioning of the horse, whether the yeah. horse is releasing stress and he's in a pleasurable state now, or he's experiencing stress, regardless, it's not the day to push, to push and try to make gains. But that's my little feeble inter interpretation. Any thoughts on this, Lynn, and how, how do we interpret this? Are they releasing stress or are they demonstrating stress, if that makes sense? I, well, first of all, to, to your point, uh, I think that's, that was very, um, that's very insightful. The more calming signals you see, the higher the stress level and the more the horses need to calm things down. And so absolutely, that's not a day to push a horse. That's a day to say, let's do stuff that, that uh, builds our bond and builds, builds the horse's confidence. Um, so I think horses try to use calming signals to manage stress. So there probably is either some stress or the horse is thinking there might be stress. And I think we see that when they use calming signals around investigative behavior. One of the common behaviors when a horse goes to investigate something new is to either turn his head away from it, like, okay, I need a little break, I need a little space from this thing, or to walk in a, a circle or an arc around it. And that's again saying, well, let me get some space from this. So he's not necessarily saying I'm really stressed right now, but he's saying this thing could make me a little concerned. So he's managing his stress before he gets to that level. So he's keeping himself in his comfort zone where he's able to investigate his, he's able to cognitive, cognitively process the information he's getting from it without going over the threshold to where he's stressed and he can't process information. And so if we let him do that, then this is cool. And, and this is how I manage investigative behavior. I let the horse tell me when he needs to back up or circle behind or turn his head away. Um, the worst thing you could do in that scenario is to say, no, you have to stay right here and keep your nose facing toward this thing because I'm saying this is what you have to do or even doing rewards. Um, let him manage his own stress. So that's a case, the investigative behavior, I think is a case where they maybe head off the stress. Other, other times it can be, I'm already stressed and I'm telling you I'm stressed. And I'm hoping that, that when you see that I'm saying I'm stressed, you're going to lower whatever the whatever you're doing that's causing me stress. Mm -hmm. And because so much horse training and handling is based on pressure, and horses are so much more sensitive to pressure than most people realize, I think a huge amount of the calming signals go on during training sessions or work sessions where the horse's stress level is ramping up because of the pressure. And, and the horse is saying, can I have a little break from this? Mm -hmm. And the person says, no, you can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially, and then, especially if we're just, if we're only trained to identify, like, let's say one sign of release, like I go back to the lick and chew, but, but let's say something else. Like I'm always big on you know, horses, diaphragmatic breathing and blowing through the nose. If we're only trained to identify like one kind of release, to your point, there's a lot of times we probably all inadvertently are adding pressure to a horse that's not in an optimal state to benefit positively from that pressure. So that's why I'm so intrigued by this topic and have been trying to slow down and take more time to identify, you know, the blinkings, a lot of the attitude with the ears, uh, neck position, these sorts of things and rate them as highly as some of the things I've been fixated on in terms of, you know, the tongue and, and the diaphragmatic breathing. <clears throat> it, well, I think one that, that also is kind of slippery as to where you actually categorize this, but yawning is interesting because, um, 
when I've asked a horse to focus, they often take a little break and yawn. And it's almost like they're saying, okay, I, this is, this is, I've got some tension built up here because I've had to focus really hard on understanding how to do precisely what you're asking me to do. And like, okay, I need to take a, a break and I need to yawn out the tension and then I'm ready to go again. So it's real simple. You give them those few seconds. And sometimes all we have to do about a calming signal is pause, maybe back up a little, take the pressure off. And that says to the horse, I heard you. Yeah. And back to our, our talk on choices a while back, horses feel so often that they are not heard, that people are not paying attention to what they need or what they feel. And just backing off enough to say to the horse, I'm giving you time to do your calming thing, and you can let me know when you're ready to move on. So I, I wonder if we, if we maybe- I love that, go, I wanna go ahead. real quick, and then remember where you wanted to pick up, we'll pick up there. The yawning example that you just gave, I love that, because sometimes I'll give a lesson to a person, and we'll go through a routine, and the horse doesn't seem to struggle, the horse performs beautifully, no resistance, doesn't seem like it's physically hard, and maybe we're doing some really dressage -y kind of stuff, and then at the end of the lesson, the rider will come over and we'll be chatting. And when they give the horse the long rein, sometimes the horse will exaggeratedly lower his neck and do all of this yawning and twisting with the head. And the rider is often oblivious to it, but I always make a huge note because if I don't, what that tells me is while that horse might've just performed beautifully, but I think he wasn't fully there. You know what I mean? Like his body was going through the movements, but there's tension and strain in there in the same way. I could go make myself run a six minute mile, but let me tell you what, that's not my main pace. Like I'm struggling inside, right? You might not see it on play, but so my body doesn't gain from it. I'm not in a, I'm not in a physiological state to make a gain. So I always try to make a note of that, like exaggerated yawning you just talked about. And I'll go, okay, I accidentally pushed these people in this lesson, this horse and rider more than that horse is actually going to benefit from. And if you don't pay attention to those little things, I would miss it, you know? So anyway, carry on where you were. Yes. Recognized. <laughs> uh, well, um, yeah. And I, and I think the yawn is, is it's, it's, it's a tricky one because even in a good way, if we're focused, that can, that can create that tension of focus. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that, yeah. Anyway, um, well, I, I was wondering if we might just do a few examples sure. mm -hmm. of things that I've observed sure. mm -hmm. with, with my horses and that, that I found rather intriguing. Um, so, and you mentioned um, when the horse yawns, he also puts his head down and that's one of the, one of the calming signals is the head, is the head going low and probably stretching out the back and everything, right? Uh, so there's a, Making yourself small is one of the calming signals. And I see that in bronze every time the vet comes. He goes into the back of his stall with his face in the corner and puts his head as low as he can. And I know his view of the vet is, I would like you lady if you didn't stick needles in me every time you came. So I think he's feeling stressed with the anticipation of something unpleasant happening. He's always a perfect gentleman, but that doesn't mean he's enjoying it. Right. So I think the right. hiding in the corner is his way of saying, I'm, I'm just trying to disengage myself uh, from this whole thing. And I, and I, I used to say, well, it, it looks like he's just trying, he's hoping to hide and, and pretending we might just forget he's there. But I think this really is for him a calming, a calming signal. Um, and the head shaking I found intriguing because Brandy does it. Um, the, the first time the chiropractor did an adjustment on her, she shook her head on probably for a minute or two minutes. I mean, wild head shaking. So we just waited, the chiropractor was great about it. We, we just waited and she got done shaking her head and then she stood like, okay, I'm ready for the next thing. And this pretty often happens. If there's a big adjustment, then she has a big head shake and then she's ready to, to stand quietly and politely for whatever the chiropractor is ready to do next. But she will also shake her head after she has just, we have just done something together that she found she had to really focus on. So if I'm giving her a new cue or asking for a new skill, um, she's very earnest. So she'll try very hard to do what I've asked for. So she's having to really think, you know, really pull out 
okay, what, what is this cue likely to mean? And what am I supposed to do? And then when she does it and she's nailed it and I go, wow, that's great. The head shake happens again, but it's a little shake. It's And it looks to me more like a Yahoo. I know I nailed it, but it might still be a release of that total focus that she had to put in to make it happen. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's something I want to make sure. Oh, the rubbing the nose on the foreleg. Do you see horses do that a lot? And um, my sister had an experience with that with her last horse. The horse came perfect manners, but a lot of anxiety. Mm-hmm. And whenever they went off for a ride, Gracie would rub her face on her foreleg over and over and over again and Danny just let her do it she said apparently this is what she needs to do I'll just let her do it now somebody who said no you've got to bring your head up make it pay attention would have increased her anxiety but what happened was over time because Danny allowed it Gracie did it less and less and less and then the the behavior pretty much disappeared Mm -hmm. so it's, it's another example I think of if we allow what the horse needs to do they, I think they need to do it less because they know we're hearing them and they're able to calm themselves and refocus on what we're asking for. And in terms of reframing, I know we like to give, you know, folks tangible quote unquote things to to take away from these chats. And in your article that you've written for us, Lynn, you've mentioned things that we can do, not just pay attention, better to identify some of these signals, but how do we then respond to them? What, what, what is our best action in these moments? So it is, I'm guessing, very horse dependent. Sometimes when horses show us what we might perceive as a calming signal, I think you've already touched on this a little bit, Lynn, but sometimes our best course of action is to step back a little bit and get out of their bubble, so to speak, to give them a bit more space. Sometimes that's the right action. Sometimes, as many of us have experienced, a horse is reassured by a gentle touch. Um, So touch sometimes is the right thing. Sometimes if a horse is like really freezing and going inward, it might be the wrong thing. So I think we can feel okay experimenting a little bit to see what we think. There's no harm in just getting to know your horse better, right? But what are your thoughts on on this, Lynn, what can, what should people sort of have in mind in terms of navigating these calming signals? I think the better you know your horse, the more effectively you can respond to this. But of course, the more experience you have with horses, then probably the the more quickly you'll learn to read a new horse. Um, But absolutely, the first thing is the pause, because sometimes all they need is that pause and acknowledgement. Then in terms of touch, I think that depends. I would tend not to touch unless I know the horse is comfortable with that. I know Brandy is always reassured with a touch, but some horses, especially if you have a horse who's not necessarily comfortable with people in their space, then the most reassuring thing you can do is step back out of their space and say to the horse, I'm respecting your space, giving you the space to do what you need to do. And then see if the horse chooses to come to you or looks at you and gives you some acknowledgement that it's okay to come back into into his space. Mm -hmm. Um, And if you see that the horse, this hasn't helped, then pause and think about what kind of body language, and I'm assuming in in most of these that we're on the ground, think about what your body language is like with your horse, because if your body language tends to be mainly based on pressure, then um, it may be hard to get past the horse's need for calming signals because there's more ongoing pressure. And that's why I like to use what I call friendly body language. That's just the name I made up for it. But it's it's basically it's uh, social learning or uh, synchronizing with the horse where we invite the horse to copy us it, as, as the way of engaging with them on the ground and, um, and showing them what we would like them to do. So rather than using using pressure, um, ask them to copy. And that, uh, that I think is a much better way of uh, helping setting a scenario where they're less likely to need to use calming signals. That's interesting. We've had a comment come in, Lynn. I, I know you can't see the comments on your end, but um, we had someone here, uh, Melissa wrote that she sighs 
<sighs> along with her horse to basically to say, I hear you, I'm, I'm here with you. And she wondered if, is that a way to support calming signals? I, I think that's perfect. Um, in fact, it occurred to me that probably one of the best ways to acknowledge that you have heard the horse is to mimic the horse's calming signal. If he backs away from you and turns his head away, you can do the same. If he yawns, you can yawn. If he sighs, you can sigh, or you can even sigh to say, okay, there's my calming signal. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the things that, that really gets a lot of people in trouble is misinterpreting signals that are actually calming signals. And there's a couple of these. One of them is avoiding eye contact. So if you have a trainer who says, no, you have to look at me with both eyes. You have to keep your face turned right toward me. To a horse, this isn't polite. To a horse, turning his face away is the polite thing. So insisting that he turn and face you, if he's trying to use a calming signal, it's going to be completely confusing. Mm -hmm. um, turning the hindquarters can actually be a calming signal. We have to be careful because, of course, it can also be a threat. Mm -hmm. but, um, but it also, it's like a person turning her back on something. I, I need to disengage from this situation for a moment here. Yeah. And so in that case, you might need to just back off and wait and see what happens because if you meet a calming signal with aggression, then horses can learn not to use calming signals with you. Um, they may shut them down. This is prob probably contributes to horses who become shut down. Mm -hmm. And they may then either go straight to the, um, to the confrontation or they may shut down emotionally um, and it's been suggested, um, Rachel Dreisner suggests that horses who aren't allowed to use calming signals with people may actually stop using calming signals with other horses. Mm. And I can imagine that causing bad chaos in a herd situation. It's so interesting, isn't it? How we can affect their nervous systems. I mean, it makes sense, but it's almost like the more you learn, the more it's like, oh my God, there's so much to know. <laughs> One of yeah, the signs, it's true. one of the calming signals that you have on here that's commonly misunderstood, and I, I like have gotten this wrong. I would say the majority of my career, except for the last few years, hopefully I'm getting better about it. But the freezing, stop and freeze. I mm -hmm. for so many years interpreted that as the horse beginning to just like go internal and shut down. And from my point of view, there was a safety component. Like if you're trail riding on a narrow trail, you don't want to lose the horse's responsiveness. And so I was always of the belief that you don't want to let a horse just oh freeze up, right? Because they can rear, they can fall over the side of the trail, whatever. And so I would, in those cases, wrongly use a touch or some encouragement or my voice, whatever. Now, my first reaction is, I'm just going to wait a bit. I'm not going to stand here for an hour, but I am going to hit pause. The horse is freezing. Obviously, they're, mm -hmm. they're usually it's because they're concerned. Usually that's what it is. But, um, you know, I think that's something and I'm just sort of encouraging myself to explore some more of these and to and to just honor them more, you know, it's just a matter of listening to the horse more closely. And, and that can come with a feeling of being a little bit overwhelmed. It's like, oh my God, there's already so much to pay attention to, but it improves our interactions so much. But anyway, that's one I've gotten wrong for a long time is the freezing. Oh, yes. Yeah, and I wonder if slowing down is maybe the precursor <clears throat> to freezing because a horse may slow down as a calming signal too. Um, my sister gave me an example, a horse that she's schooling, she wanted to show him shoulder in. And when she first showed him shoulder in and she is, she judged him to be capable of understanding and physically doing it, but he would only, he would go slower and only do a couple of steps. So like us, she's getting more savvy and, and understanding about these things. So instead of pushing him, she'd accept those couple of steps, do something else, come back, ask him for a couple of steps. And we talked about it as it may have been that it was just that was all he could process in that moment and he needed a break from it and then all of a sudden one day she had her shoulder in and he marched right down the long side the whole way in shoulder in like yeah i got this now yeah. so i think sometimes letting them slow down is their way of saying I, I just need a little more time to process this and this happens a lot i think in any kind of training 
uh, where horses need more processing time than people tend to want to give them because um, the time when they have that time, then they can cognitively process something and then they've really got it. Yeah, I watched a great clinician a couple of weeks back and he just reminded us all of, would you look at how much physical and mental stimulus a riding horse has at any moment? I mean, they've got stimulus in their mouths, with the, in, in their head, they've got stimulus down their sides. They have the stimulus of us asking them to move at a certain pace. And now we're going to ask him to bend his body and do shoulder it. I mean, just think of yourself. Like if you exercise <laughs> yeah. a bank hold or something and you're like, wow, I feel my hamstring and maybe my shoulders burning and all these physical sensations, never mind having somebody on your back. You know, it, it is so much. <laughs> it, it really is. And I think if we, when we, when you put it in that context, it is incredible how cooperative horses are and how well most of them do manage it and how gracefully many of them manage it. That's <laughs> true. So uh, Zoom is giving me my notice. We have eight minutes left. So I wanna give, make sure you have well, time to wrap <laughs> up. And um, if anybody has a last question, go ahead and drop it in the chat. I'm gonna let Lynn um, wrap up wherever she wishes. And I'm just gonna remind folks that this recording will be on my YouTube channel. Lynn will repost it on her Facebook page. And there will also be an article that you can read that Lynn wrote from these uh, original sources for where our understanding of calming signals has come. And I, I just want to underscore, this is an evolving sort of a topic. I think we're, we're just starting to learn more about it. Oh, we had a question come in. Oh, it's just a, a question? comment that they joined late, but uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we're good. We will repost it. Um, we did have a comment from Heather saying that she gets a lot of yawning when she does equine massage. And should she interpret that as that the massage is stressful to the horse? What are your thoughts on that? I, I don't know. I think I would defer that to you, Jack, because you're more familiar with the physical responses. Is that, is yawning also just a form of releasing tension? Yeah, because, I mean, typically, typically uh, I think it is. And uh, sometimes when it's accompanied by, as you pointed out, the looking away, often I do uh, interpret that as a release of tension. But to go back to what we already covered in this talk, whether it is like a big release of tension or that the horse is feeling like, whoa, I'm a little overstimulated from this massage and I'm stressed. In either case, I think the right thing to do, I think, is just to give them more space. Um, if they're like yawning and yawning and turning their head away, it's just like give them all the time that they need. I think that sometimes my body work sometimes can take a really long time on some horses until they really trust the process and get in, you know, get used to the process. Cause I think it can be pretty intense for what they release from their body. Um, and they might need a good body worker, I think gives them that time, gives them all the time they need to process before going back in and starting to, to touch them again. That's just my, my own opinion on that. I, well, that makes sense to me. And that fits what um, our, our chiropractor has always done with our horses is um, if, if when Brandy gets into her big yawning or her head shaking, then she just backs off, waits, yeah. lets her lets her do this, and then she's okay. Um, the, the backing off when you see a calming signal can be, can be really powerful. I had Brandy at the uh, equine hospital at Cornell uh, a few years ago. And as she's walking into the stocks to get um, to get scoped for ulcers, she's, she she was standing in there politely, but then she started shaking her head violently. And the poor student holding her is trying to hold her head. So I said, no, let her let her shake it out. And she shook her head, shook it, shook and shook, and then stood perfectly still for the whole rest of the procedure. So I think, you know, back to the, the yawning during body work. Well, yes. Maybe just yeah. take the hands away so there's no stimulation, let them yawn it out, and then watch the horse's body language where more some relaxation is going to say, okay, I'm ready for you to proceed. So I think, I mean, I think that's a very sensitive way to handle it. Well, and I've seen horses, I've seen a lot of horses who get body work regularly. I've seen that routine. It's really cool. Again, I go back to Masterson just because I see that technique practiced a lot out here, but 
the horse will start to release a ton and the body worker will step away and the horse will release, release, and then physically walk back over to the body worker when they're like ready to reset. And beautiful. it's really cool to see that happen and be allowed to happen. I think it's really awesome. Um, let's see, we have one little comment come in from Holly. Hi, Holly. That's my student, Holly. Um, she had a question that she has one horse who yawns a lot. Um, but then it sounds like she has one who doesn't yawn much. And, and she's wondering, do, should she worry about the horse that doesn't yawn much? Should she do something to try to encourage it to yawn more? And I'm, I'm going to say, no, that's just one calming signal is the yawning. Um, so if your horse isn't doing it, I don't think that's necessarily a bad sign. Maybe there's eye blinking or ear, or ear turning, or uh, again, you can go ahead and read um, Lynn's article for some, some of the other calming signals. But what, Lynn, is this something that you would worry about if you had a horse that maybe wasn't yawning as much as your others? No, no, I, I, I completely agree with you. Um, they have their own calming signals. Different horses use different ones, which is part of what makes them confusing. Um, and I mean, bronze almost never yawns. He has his own ways of showing showing stress, which is usually he wants to disengage. Brandy's the big yawner. Um, I think the more important thing is to look at your horse's emotional state. That, that's where it always comes back to, what's your horse's emotional state? And, and trust yourself your empathy is going to show you it's going to tell you a lot about what your horse's emotional state is so even if you can't um, identify and say okay I'm seeing x y and z behaviors that tell me my horse needs to calm himself or that she's stressed um, if that's the feeling you have trust yourself because very often we pick up intuitively on things that we can't define and so that's that that I think is is the better place to, to make the decision on what's going on and what do I need to do about it. And when in doubt, step back, wait and see what your horse does. And if you step back and your horse comes toward you, as, as you mentioned earlier, and your horse comes toward you, then you're good to go. Yeah. It sounds like your horse says, yeah, I'm glad you heard me. Um, I'm all set now and we can carry on. I love it. Well, that's a perfect place to wrap it up. Yeah. And again, to your point, this is not a topic we're trying to stress people out about. It's just one more thing to think about, um, I think, to to improve your relations with your horse, and and I've I'm enjoying learning more about it and fumbling my way through. So thanks <laughs> thanks for shedding some light here, Lynn. This has been super fun, and um, thank you all for joining us. We'll see you soon next time. So long. Bye, everybody.